Welcome to the Leadership Roundtable, a podcast with Dr. Conway Edwards, where our goal is to help you increase your leadership capacity. Let's get ready for today's episode. Welcome to the Leadership Roundtable, a podcast with Dr. Conway Edwards, where we look forward to hopping on here every month with you to help you expand your leadership capacity. And today we have a special guest. Before I introduce him, I just want to encourage you, go to our webpage where you can get our outline and show notes for what we talk about today. It's visit1cc.com slash leadership roundtable. Now, special guest episode alert in the house, in the building, in Plano, Texas today. We have Dr. Darius Daniels from Change Church. How you doing, man? What's up, my friend? I'm fantastic. Glad to be here in the country of Texas. Yes. The nation of yes, Texas. That's what we all believe in Texas. <laughs> We're glad to be here with y'all, man. Yeah. Love love the house. Love Pastor Conway. Love y'all. We love having you here. And today, um, just to talk about leadership. Sure. And that's the that's what this podcast is all about. But you were sharing earlier that the one skill that scales is leadership. Leadership is the skill that scales. You can't scale anything without the skill. Like one of the things that I learned a while ago is there are like all skills aren't created equal. Okay. Um, that there are some skills that are like meta skills, mm -hmm. I think is, is the word mm -hmm. most people would use, right? So I don't know what y'all do in Texas, but I grew up in Mississippi and people play dominoes a lot. Uh -huh. right? All right, okay. <laughs> all right, so let's say you take dominoes or you stack a, a bunch of dominoes up and then you hit one domino and then that domino knocks all the other dominoes right. down. That one domino that knocks down all the other dominoes will be called a meta skill. It's like if you get this thing right, it helps you get a lot of other things right. Because wow. all skills, some skills are like specialty skills. Mm -hmm. It means if you got that skill, you can do a thing. Right. When you, when you develop a meta skill, a meta skill allows you to do a lot of things. Mm. <laughs> and leadership is, is a meta skill. It, That's right. It's that one domino that if you knock that down, you can knock a lot of other dominoes down. And I just feel like we live in an era in church and in the marketplace where there is such an obsession with specialty skills. And I'm all for mastery right. and developing a skill that I think we're underemphasizing the importance of skills that might not be as popular, mm -hmm. but are way more consequential. Yeah. Um, and leadership is just, it's one of those skills. Wow. So tell me, so if, if we neglect the skill of leadership, yeah. how are we going to be limited in our mission, our vision, whatever we're trying to do, how is leadership going to, going to hold us back if we're not doing it? Right. So I, let me apply this first, like per, uh, personally, Right. And then we can talk about how I think it limits your organization. Mm. Purpose, when it comes to your like purpose personally, yeah. this is what I believe. I believe um, mm. that you cannot be, be your best self by yourself. Mm. Say that one more time. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot That's be good. your best self by yourself. Right. Um, and so some of the people um, that you are going to need in your life to help you become a version of yourself that you could not become alone. Right. Um, and I'll put it this way, becoming the version of yourself that you couldn't become alone allows you to do some things mm. that you couldn't do. Yeah. It's like in the coaching space, we call it think, uh, think, be, do philosophy. Okay. Well, think, be, do, have. Some people yeah. don't have because they can't do. And some people can't do because they won't be. <laughs> and, they, and they can't be because they're not thinking. <laughs> right. So, but basically, personally, um, God's going to give you a vision personally that's bigger than you. So it's going to require more than you. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have to know how to discover, develop, and deploy other people just to help you do what you've been born to do. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. Now you apply it organizationally mm -hmm. when God gives mm -hmm. an organization, a church, a company, yeah. a mission. Yeah. That mission for that organization is bigger than you. And, and so I don't care how big and how clear and how amazing the dream is. You don't go as far as your dream. You go as far as your team. And, <laughs> and that applies personally and organizationally. So this is why I think this is, I'm like trying to, proverbially like scream from the top of the roof like fam mm -hmm. develop this skill yeah yeah this is you can't speak your way into certain things you can't 
teach your way into certain things. You can't um, um, coach your way into certain things. There are cer- there are some dominoes that only fall when you become intentional mm-hmm. about developing and mastering the leadership skill. Because you can skill learn this. Leadership. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. when I, when we say like com- let's say competency, leadership competence. Yeah. Company is an acquired set of skills. Right. Now I know there's a leadership mm-hmm. spiritual gift. I'm right. not talking about that. Right. I'm talking about like leadership. I, I literally just, I was talking to some of my team about this recently. I was like, hey guys, <laughs> being a leader means doing the things that leaders do. <laughs> That's, this is not just like a reward. Being a leader, it's not yeah. a reward because yeah. you've been here a long time. Right. It's not the way this works. It's not, it's not a reward for doing a good job at your previous in your previous role, mm-hmm. when you say yes to leadership, you're saying yes to doing the things that, lead- that mm-hmm. leaders have to do. You have to cast vision. You got to confront um, problems. You got to run great meetings. You got to have tough conversations. You got to discover. You got to develop. You got to deploy talent. Yeah. Like, so saying you don't want to do that and you want to lead is saying, I want to be a chef, but I don't want to cook. That's right. <laughs> I just want the chef hat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I heard Eric Thomas say, everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. Mm, I like that. And you're saying the same like thing. That. Everybody yeah. wants to be a leader until it's time to do what leaders do. Yeah. Tell, me, tell, tell us a little bit about what that has looked like for you personally over the last year, you know, couple few years to discover, to develop, to deploy. How's God worked that in your life and in your leadership? Yeah, I see it in two spaces. I see it in ministry, in the church, and I see it in our ministry in the marketplace. Yeah. So, I mean, you and I were talking about this offline um, a couple of years ago. I We transitioned to Atlanta, Georgia, mm-hmm. and uh, for 15 years or so, our primary church locations were in New Jersey. Right. Right. And we were doing some missional communities in different places, but in terms of fully functioning and operational campuses, it was primarily New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And uh, we expanded into the Atlanta area. Yeah. Uh, actually, um, we started. We were we were planning on moving forward uh, before COVID, and then COVID happened, and so it kind of pushed us back a little bit. And so, long story short, we transitioned right from two locations, primarily in New Jersey, where I was live right. and all the services going back and forth. Now, always had we still had to have teams running those locations. Yeah to a completely different model where Atlanta is primarily the broadcast location. Okay. Simulcasting into the locations into New Jersey and me popping into New Jersey um, from time to time, yeah. simulcasting back mm-hmm. to the location in Atlanta. And there is absolutely no way now we could have had that kind of expansion, yeah. which is expanded <clears throat> our impact. We're reaching more people than we've ever reached before. And that is possible, not because of my preaching. Mm -hmm. Because preaching isn't the skill that scales. We ran into that when I was going back and forth doing five services live every weekend from location to location, location to location. Preaching wasn't the skill that scaled. Mm. Because at some point, we I ran out of energy. And it wasn't enough hours in the day. <laughs> yeah. So mm-hmm. we, plat- we, we would plateau. Yeah. And um, we literally ran into some of that. So it means that we had to develop teams that can pretty much mm-hmm. run all of the various locations. Yeah. We had to watch this. Also then lead congregations into accepting a model of ministry yeah. that had not been their model of ministry for close to 15 years. Yep. And there is no way I could have done that just with sermons. Mm -hmm. And there's no way I could have done that by myself. Mm. Like I may have been the voice, Mm. but the leaders had to be the echoes that were uh, consistently reminding people of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah. Because why power is better than willpower. That's right. Every time. Yeah. That's good. Now, so you you went to another level. Um, What did it look like for you? growing, leading, carrying your team to that level with you. I mean, you, you jumped from New Jersey to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I mean, you were on a mission, and all of a sudden things have expanded. But what was that journey like? It had to be a little bit of stepping out of your comfort zone, 
Uh, but but what, what was it like for you? Yeah, it was a lot of stepping out of my comfort zone. And it's, it, it was and is a lot of ups and downs, you know, because there is a part of this, I tell people, that it's highly experimental, right? Yeah. There's like one of my um, family members is in the insurance biz- uh, business, and he would talk to me from time to Every now and then he mentioned something to me called like risk analysis, mm-hmm. right? And so that's kind of what you're, it's like prayerful, <laughs> you do a prayerful risk yeah. analysis. And um, so there's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of experimentation and um, there is a lot of what I call reinvesting. And this is what I mean by that. So okay. I'm doing some things in this stage of my leadership that I hadn't done in like a decade. Gotcha. Meetings I'm having, trainings I'm doing. Yeah. It's like, oh, I got to say that again? I hadn't had to say that for 10 years. Or I, had to, I hadn't had to go down and do that for 10 years. Mm-hmm. So we've got, uh, even tomorrow, I don't know when people will hear this, but when we're recording this tomorrow, um, we have a Dream Team this Summit, which is our annual conference that we have for all of our Dream Team, our volunteers. It's in-house. So I will be there tomorrow yeah. leading two sessions with everybody that is volunteering at our Atlanta location. I did it in New Jersey last week. And all of those locations have campus leadership teams. So they got campus pastors and directors Mm -hmm. and administrators and staff and all of that. But I am having to reinvest Mm -hmm. when it comes to relaying foundation and and things of that nature. So I think it took me a minute to, I knew that cognitively, it took me a minute to accept that emotionally. Mm -hmm. But um, that's part of it, like leadership is, situational and contextual it's what situation are we in based on that what do i need to do mm-hmm. <laughs> and what context are we mm-hmm. in okay i'm not in the northeast right where the tone and the temperament is completely different mm-hmm. atlanta's the south and so okay what do we how do we do this our yeah. thing mm-hmm. how do we do that here and so a lot of that can get, I don't want that being lost in translation mm-hmm. initially. This foundational period is so important. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of reinvesting, man. So you're back in it. I'm back in it. <laughs> I'm back in it. But ha- that's the only way we can really grow as leaders, right? I think, I think different seasons require that. Yeah. yeah. And it is. It's growing me and growing my leadership mm-hmm. in ways that it just can't grow reading a book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You got to do it. Who, who, so when you're growing, what does it look like for you to have a network of other pastors, leaders that's pouring into you? Um, maybe who that is or what that looks like? Cause I'm yeah. guessing you're leaning on some people to learn from. Yep. Somewhat. So, you know, I have a pastor, which I think is, is, is incredibly important. Yeah. I also have a leadership. I've got two coaches and one's more personal. It's more of a think coach, mm-hmm. but, uh, and then the other is an actual leadership coach. Mm-hmm. And so we walk through and talk through leadership issues. I think, I think we should always be growing and learning and acquiring information. I think, though, you kind of get to a point, if you've been doing it long enough, when I say doing it, meaning investing in you right. long enough with reading, studying, training, et cetera, mm-hmm. that what you, what you need help with often is not information. You don't need more leadership theory. Mm-hmm. You need, like, implementation. Mm. Help me think through what I need right. to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's kind of the way I'm leaning on people mm-hmm. in this season. I'm still doing my regular regimen. I'm reading le- something on leadership every day, yeah. listening to leadership podcasts, you know. But in terms of the deposit that people are making, it's less teaching in this season, and I'm getting more coaching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as you're as you're growing and you talk about campuses and all, what does it look like for you now to pour into other leaders and to develop them? Cause you have to have, if you've got a campus running and you're simulcasting, I'm guessing you got to have teams that can run it on their own without you there. Yes. 100%. So that's the re we're in it. We're in the thick of it right now. Uh-huh. We're in the, we're in the reinvesting period. So here's a mistake I made. Right. And I want to share this cause I learned a whole lot more. Uh, from people like telling me where they missed it from time to time. Yeah. So here's a mistake I made. I underestimated how much mission drifts and vision leaks. Right. I underestimated. I I forgot that part of your role as a leader is to be a chief reminding officer. Mm. And so I made some assumptions post-COVID 
Yeah. That people were just just going to pick back up where they left off. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, they didn't. And so there had to be some wow. recasting of vision that we're in it. We're in it. Recasting a vision, reteaching of things, mm-hmm. reestablishing of standards, and so we're kind of in that in that season now. It's it's yeah. it's uh, it's it's really weird because we know there's a lot we're working on and that we're developing organizationally, yet we're seeing the favor of God yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. So um, you know we're grateful for it. That's good. I, I mean, we can resonate with you on that. Yeah, <laughs> that 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 kind of man. Yes, over and over and over. What. Now, let me ask you, what, as your leadership grows and as you're trying new things, what do you see being unlocked? What do you see on the horizon if leadership gets right? I know you talked about the meta skill. What is that going to unlock in the church and marketplace when we get this right? Uh, I think, one, it's going to unlock um, numerical and spiritual growth Mm -hmm. in the church. Yeah. I really do, because I'm going to tell you something. I don't know any, you know, I'm like the Apostle Paul uses words. I think I love preaching more than ye all. (laughs) (laughs) I love preaching more than ye all. But when it comes to helping a person develop the virtues, the values, and the vantage point of Jesus, actually being a disciple of of his, the preaching of the gospel inspires them to do that, but they can only actually become that in the context of community. Um, Mm. programs that deal with their specific discipleship needs. So if you are a 35-year-old woman who lives in Texas, how are you supposed to live like a man who died at 33, Mm -hmm. who was a Middle Eastern Palestinian Jew, who lived on the other side of the world in a completely different... so, So that person needs discipleship tailored specifically toward them. And so it takes the le- it takes the leadership skill uh, to be able to discover, develop, and deploy the teams mm-hmm. and the systems and the support structure to actually create that programming that's going to help people grow spiritually. Yeah. And it's also going to help the church grow numerically. Business-wise, what I'm trying to get people to see, specifically entrepreneurs in the marketplace, right? Because it's the, the vast majority of entrepreneurs in this country have one employee. Mm-hmm. It's the overwhelming vast yeah. majority. So it's solopreneurship. Right. And what I'm trying to get them to see is you can't build your empire without destroying your castle. Mm. You can't have success without right. losing your sanity. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you can't be productive and have peace <laughs> if... You stop trying to be a one man, a one woman right. band with your specialty skill mm-hmm. and develop the leadership skill that wow. you need that's going to help you increase your influence because you'll be able to serve more people in the marketplace, increase your impact. You'll be able to impact people in a greater way and then increase your income. There'll be more revenue that yeah. comes into the company that you can use to fund the things philanthropically mm-hmm. that you feel called to and that you care about. Wow. That's good. And that's same thing goes for pastors who are solo at it. I yeah. mean, it's both. Yeah. Man, that's so 100%, 100%. good. 100%. 100%. So I got a question for you. This We'll, we'll close on this one um, and then see what else you have. Um, I, I just recently heard this statement that um, a leader's vision needs to be so big that everyone who serves under them, it, it's got to be so big that other people's visions can fit inside of it. mm so the leader's umbrella has got to be so big that there's room for other people to have their vision and serve under that leader. And if the leader's vision is not big enough, other people will bail. Yeah. Two things, I think, when I hear that. I would say I kind of agree. Yeah. All right? And so this is what I mean by that. I think when we talk about big, what comes to my mind is size. Yes. I would argue that probably what matters more is type. Okay. Not just the size of the vision, but the type okay. of vision. Yeah. Because if a vision is large, but it is very monolithic, mm. for example, we just get people to heaven. Yeah. It's going to be really hard for a person like me to find my place in that vision. Right. I'm tracking with you. Because I am passionate about getting 
people to experience some heaven on earth. That's right. That's good. Got me? I love it. So for me, salvation is not a destination. It's a door to a new life under new management. So when wow. someone gets converted, it's not our job is done. For me, when someone gets converted, now it's, it's time Let's to go. get to work. And so no matter how big that vision is, mm -hmm. it's not my type. I'm with you. So I'm it's like you. vision is like water and we like fish. Mm -hmm. Certain fish need certain types of water. That's good. So I think it needs to be the right size mm -hmm. that has room for people and it has to be the right type. Yeah. I will expand my size. Yeah. I will not change my type. That's good. Does that make sense? That's good. The size is negotiable. The type isn't. Uh -huh. Yeah. And if this isn't for you, I think that's important too. We need to talk about that, right? That just because a vision isn't your type right. doesn't mean that that vision is deficient. Right. And sometimes people attempt to justify mm -hmm. something that doesn't fit yeah. by identifying some dysfunction as opposed to saying, there's nothing wrong with this vision. Right. It's just not my type. It's just different. And I need to find, instead of trying to make fret this water, pool water, salt water, right. I need to find water that actually aligns with what kind of fish I am. That's really good. Don't change the pond, change yours. Yeah. Ooh. All right. I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Leadership, as you said at the beginning, the skill that scales. The skill that scales. Man, come on, leaders. It's time to step up, lead. And you said earlier, discover, develop, deploy. Mm -hmm. And we got to start somewhere. That's right. And um, we want to thank you for joining in. What an honor to have Dr. Darius Daniels with us here today. Man, we're praying for you. We're thank excited you. for what God's doing as you step out and as you get out of your comfort zone and as you're leading in a new way. Yeah. And just want to encourage other leaders not to get stale, not to, not to say things. There's things that I'm not going to do anymore because mm. God might have some things for us all to step into and do to rebuild and rediscover. Yeah. So thank you again for joining us at Dallas. Um, this week. We're so grateful you're here. Um, thank you for joining us on the podcast. Thank you again for investing your time. If this has been helpful to you, we'd love it if you would leave us a review or share this with someone else that needs to develop um, their skill of leadership. Again, you can follow along on our webpage. Visit 1cc.com slash leadership roundtable. Again, shout out to Darius Daniels and Change Church. We're so honored to have you. We'll see you back next month. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining the podcast today. It has been an honor to have you here with us. Now, just want to remind you that all of the resources we talked about today are available online at visit1cc.com slash leadership roundtable. Now, if this has been helpful, leave us a review, go out there and hit subscribe, and more importantly, share this with your team so that everybody can grow. We can't wait to see you next time.